Welcome back, my dear student. So, in this lecture, we're going to take a look at the object ID that I told you about in the last lecture, right? We, I said to you that MongoDB always creates some type of ID. And it creates this, you know, object ID just because you don't want to have the same record with the same ID. It's always going to be different. It's going to create a unique ID, unique ID for every single document. And when I say record, it means document, guys. Okay, I'm just you use I use a lot of uh, MySQL, so I'm used to using schema-based databases. So this MongoDB is a schema-less database, meaning we don't have a specific data. We can insert whatever we want. And let me show you, as a matter of fact. So I already inserted a record with a value of a key name, name, and a value of horse. I can go ahead and do this again, and let's just call this, I don't know, dog, and the next would be, the next value would be uh, legs, something like this, and I'm just going to say four in a string, right? Let's just do it in a number like that, and let's see what happens here. It says insert it. Right, and I come back here, and I'm gonna do refresh. Come back here, and now it says dog, and it says four. Okay, I want you to look at this document. You see, I was able to insert a different field on another document related. Now, these documents are now related. Okay, we're just inserting data in the database. So with something like MySQL, a schema-based database, we have to go by whatever columns we got. In this case, we don't have any columns types, right? We can just insert as many different, okay, values we want. And of course, you see right now, this one has no field here, but this one does. So you might think, oh my gosh, so Edwin, we can insert any type of data and it can just be very crazy and very disorganized. And you're correct, it can be. And it's really a confusing thing when uh, people come from a schema-based uh, database knowledge to a schema-less uh, database. And that's just really, really confusing. But don't worry about it. That's why we use something like Mongoose. Mongoose is going to allow us to create a schema for a database later on so that way we know what type of data is going to our database and we know what type of data we got to look for okay so don't worry about it just learn this knowledge here and don't worry about anything else okay so anyway this object ID that we have here okay is different for for every document like I mentioned okay now you don't always have to go by what MongoDB is inserting or doing for you. We can modify this. Now, why would you want to modify it? Well, there are cases where you want to have certain types of, of IDs for your documents, but really, in reality, I never use that feature. I always let MongoDB decide what is the best ID possible for my documents, okay? Now, each of these fields here, each of these characters, four, three, uh, four or five different characters, this is a encryption in here. So there is a lot of data that MongoDB reads here, and you can go to the documentation, but there are specific characters here that means different things, okay? So MongoDB is, you know, reading all these characters byte by byte, and is deciding how to make this data unique by the machine, by, you know, doing some random characters and doing different things in there. You can look at it in the documentation if you want more information. But anyway, so there are ways that we can pull this object ID out, okay? And I'm gonna show you. Come back here and instead of doing the Mongo client like this, we are going to be using the structuring, meaning that in that MongoDB, we are going to be pulling out this Mongo client. We can do that by doing the curly brackets there. Instead of chaining it to the end, we're just going to sign it here. And it works the same. 
I'm gonna show you. I'm going to call this fish here, and the fish has two legs. <laughs> Let's do, and now it says insert it. Let's look at our data here in a compass, and I'm gonna refresh. Come back here, and mammals, and now we have fish and two legs, okay? Which I didn't know fish has legs, but you get my drift, right? So we were able to do the same thing as to chaining this to the end here, but with destructuring, you make sure that you have the same name of whatever you want to pull from here, here, in between these curly brackets. Now, sometimes you're going to see me using destructuring like this, well, in a way, using it like that because I, we are chaining it to the end or we are exporting some type of data from here out. But anyway, so let's use destructuring. And I'm going to put a comma to pull something else out of there. And what I want to pull out is this object ID. See that? And now I want to come here and once I have it, I want to console that. Console log the object ID that I got on top there. There we go. I'm not going to be making this anymore. And now when I refresh here, you can see now, oops. That's actually a function. Sorry about that. Right here. And this function, you can see now that new ID there. Okay. Now, we can call it as a function or we can do it as a constructor and we can do something like const um, object and then we can come back here and we can say new object like that and then in this console log we can say object Okay, now let's go and do this again so you can see the ID is going to be different. I'm going to do control C and I'm going to do node app. You see the ID there? 753. I'm going to disconnect control C again. I'm going to do it again and you can see the ID keeps changing it. We can do it ourselves. Now, now you might be thinking, okay, Edwin, you said that we can either let MongoDB do it or we can do it ourselves. Yes, you can go ahead and, and create this new constructor here, this new object, right? And insert that ID, okay, inside your documents. But you can go further. You can even change it if you, if you like to, okay? change this to a string and insert it in your database that way. Let me give you some more information about it. Right here. Okay. So this is the object ID page. This is a method. And you can see that we can get a timestamp. So we get that date out of there if we wanted to. We can say to string. Okay just to return a string literal. We can come back here and you can see that this, of course, this is what we did right now. Okay. So you can go further if you wanted to. Again, I, I really don't use this. I let MongoDB do it for me, so I don't play around with this like this. Okay. But anyway, so that's all I had to give you guys about object ID. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture, guys. Keep it up. Uh, if you're falling asleep, get some water, get some rest, and then let's go to the next lecture.